So this is a video from the Marsh Challenge. So the Marsh Challenge involves estimating true vehicle speed using only camera frames. In this data set, we are given training video with just the frames and true vehicle speeds at each frame. There are some issues in the data that make it challenging to train a model to actually accomplish this challenge. The first issue is that the data is noisy. This is a common problem in many navigation tasks where we have a GPS or an inertial navigation system with accelerometers that measure vehicle speed or motion. This data has a lot of inherent noise but can be easily filtered with something like a common filter. The other problem is that the speed, for whatever reason, just lags and hangs up at the same value. And you can see right here where, we, where this is labeled with a red background that it stays at the same value, even though it's more than likely not at that value, and it's actually jumping around, even in reality. This could be problematic for some models, and we might want to flag it as such, and maybe consider taking it out of the training data. So in this video, we're going to learn how to apply a common filter on the speed, and how to use the filtered data to detect when the data might not be valid. It's going to be hard to do this without filtered data, which really drives the necessity of some sort of filtering. So with that being said, let's get started. So in this notebook right here, I've already downloaded the Mars challenge data. I've installed FilterPy and imported libraries. So right now, I have the training data loaded. All it is, it's just a text file. It's a text file of speeds, nothing more, just a one column and I've put it in a histogram. You can see it ranges from 0 to 8 and in reality it's probably scaled by some factor to well, I would imagine make the challenge more challenging and so we can't use training data from another data set. Another thing is we have these values that stay at the constant value for long periods of time. This looks completely erroneous and is probably put in by the curators of the data set in order to make it more challenging. And this is very apparent by the large spiky modes in this histogram. The only one that is not erroneous is probably going to be the zero speed right here because the vehicle does come to a stop and seeing a speed of zero does make sense to me. So the first approach is to take out the noise in this data. So we can see this data has noise and I will show you an example. So the PLT plot, we will take the Y train and we're just going to take a slice right here. Actually, I'm going to come back and make this bigger, just so you can see. Maybe a smaller slice. And you can kind of see these jagged edges right here. So these jagged edges, like this edge right here, where the value is the same for two, it's, or it's probably three. We're not going to want to mark those as invalid. That's just a noise component. We're going to want to smooth these out a little bit. So let's dive in and look at how we're going to do this with a common filter. So for a common filter, we're going to use a constant acceleration model. So what does that mean? It basically means we're going to model position, speed, and acceleration. But we're only getting speed data in our data set. So how are we going to get these other things? Well, we're going to get speed from our data. Acceleration, we're going to actually take the first derivative of speed. And we're just going to take our current speed minus the previous speed divided by our current timestamp minus the previous timestamp. And this gives us a rough estimate of our acceleration. Our position is really just the integral of the speed, but we're actually going to let the common filter handle this and store it in our state. So we have our state transition matrix right here. This is the row for position, this is the row for speed, and this is the row for acceleration. And this is our standard constant acceleration model for one dimension. This is our measurement function. So this only measures speed and acceleration and this allows us to take our state vector x and scale it to our measurement vector z and to perform operations in the, in the measurement space. 
So this is going to map to our speed, and this is going to map to our acceleration. And now we have our covariances. So our standard covariance matrix P is going to be the variance of our data as we transition to the next state or when we do our prediction. This basically trust the is the uncertainty of our model during the prediction. So now we have the measurement noise. This is how much we trust our measurements that we're getting from our data. So notice I've scaled this R variance value by five because I really don't trust the acceleration measurement that we're taking a very rough estimate of. There's also the process noise. This is basically how much we trust our constant acceleration model. This is a pretty tricky parameter to tune, so I've generally left it alone in my experimenting. So let's create the object to get started. So if you're not too familiar with the Kalman filter, let me just fill you in with a couple of examples. So our first thing to do, we can just inspect the state. We have all zeros because that's what we've initialized with. The first thing we need to do is to get a measurement. So we can simulate a measurement with just a quick numpy array. So let's say we get a, sp a speed of two and an acceleration of zero. We're gonna wanna go into our filter and perform an update which is the first thing we want to do. And now let's see what that gets us. Now uh, take, a, take a guess and see what do you think the new state will be after we measure a speed of two and an acceleration of zero. And keep in mind that we have noise factors here that basically influence how we the common filter will interpret the measurements. So let's see what happens. <coughs> so we get a value that's less than two, and even though we me we measured two, and we have an acceleration, even though we have um, a zero acceleration in our measurement. So the easiest way to understand, go back and understand this, is that we have some sort of measurement noise, which means we don't trust our measurements. We can actually tune this parameter, and we'll get different values as we make measurements. Now let's go ahead and make an up and make a prediction step based on what we know or based on what the common filter knows. So it has propagated the position state forward based on this um, speed or this um, speed and acceleration and it's also propagated the velocities and has kept the velocity or the acceleration the exact same because we're using a constant acceleration model. Let's just put another state and see what happens. Let's do this again. So you can see we get closer to the actual value of two, but we're not there yet. And the reason why we're not there yet is because we still have large noise factors that are basically making us not want to trust the data and not want to trust the model enough. We need some more samples to get our confidence or beliefs up that we're able to actually you know, believe the data that's coming through. So let's X out of these and let's go, I'll show you the loop that we're gonna to use to apply the common filter on the data. So in this function right here, we're gonna add our data, the common filter object and our time step constant. Basically the time step constant is what we're assuming the time between updates. I've used one because it yields pretty good results as opposed to experimenting with the actual frame rate of our video. So. We're going to store the common filter states in this x states list. In order to compute the velocities or the speeds, we're going to store this in this previous variable right here. And every time we get a speed, I'm going to drop it in here. And I'm not going to use the filtered speed in order to do that. So we're going to store our measurements in this z array. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute our acceleration, xa, and then we're going to get our measurement. So, and with that being said, once we have our measurement, we can perform an update. And we're going to append our common filter state to the update, and then we're going to do a predict. And then we're going to cycle through this, and every time we get an update, we're going to we're going to append our new state. Say, so, yeah, we could trust that. So we're not going to append it after predict is because sometimes the data actually drifts off its true value. We only do that in a real-time system if we don't get an update is when we use the prediction state. So we're going to return an array of states, and then we're going to basically get our um, smooth training data, and then we're going to be able to plot it. So 
right here it looks it's a little off from that example so I have to reset the filter so right here it looks one for one so we're really going to want to zoom in to see what's going on let's make another temporary plot right here and we're going to just erase these and uncomment these zoom these zooms right here and still not quite plot plot it right here so we can see that it's jagged the original one is jagged but this smooth one is actually smooth and you can see and this big plot right here that we don't really have any major deviations away from the actual truth so let's do one more plot right here then I can see another aspect of the smooth data so you can see in general we don't exactly have we try to have more round peaks with the smooth data right here we don't do this jagged peak right here it's more round and that's generally a more realistic thing of what what's going on so these are measurement instrument artifacts they're stair steppy is because they're quantized and they're there's round off errors there's all kinds of stuff that are going to give us these artifacts these jagged artifacts so back to the original other issue of invalid data now you can see where this data just goes flat right here. This is the measure, the speed measurement is just going to a single value. And we're gonna to try to flag these. So we still have these in here, and as you've seen up top, there's still these spiky modes. The, this, the common filtering doesn't get rid of these unless we aggressively filter it. And in that case, we're probably gonna be way off. So we're not gonna to wanna to do that. So for example, we can try this common filter right here. Basically, we add a ton of noise And you can see we kind of don't get jaggedy, but it's not perfect. You know, we go up and down, but it's not perfect, and we're a little bit too off for my own taste. So we're going to go back to our regular Coleman filter. So now that we're back to normal, let's go see how to find the data. So basically, we're going to take the diff of the smooth data. We're going to add a zero to it, and we're going to take the absolute value of the diff, and we're going to uh, see which ones are less than a small value, which ones are basically close to zero. And so this is going to do is just give us a logical that tells us when the data is valid. So that's all that's all we're doing if it's one is valid if it's zero is invalid and we do this little trick right here to make sure that zero speed is always valid so this gets us right here we can see that when we get to this flat line right here we have a little bout of invalid when we get to this flat line a little bout of invalid same with this right here same with this right here and we match it up we match everything up it's not going to be entirely perfect but if we were to do something like say for example we just use the regular unsmoothed data. It becomes very problematic. We have it looks like half this stuff is um invalid, and in fact, it almost is. We get almost you know over fifty percent is valid still, but this is not good. So that, that is one reason that necessitates the use of a common filter or some sort of filtering mechanism in order to correctly flag the invalid data. So with that being said, here are the results. Once again, this is the bars challenge. You can see, you can't really tell that the data is um, smooth as much, but you can definitely tell when the data goes quote unquote invalid and we might want to flag it when the vehicle speed stops. With that being said, it also determ it also matters how we use this. So just because the, the speed is stopped doesn't mean it might not be useful for a model. It really just depends on what model we're training. So we want to take this information with a grain of salt.